Welcome in to Duval Daily, presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thanks so much for tuning in here on Wednesday, February 22nd. This will be the first of two shows today. We're talking about Evan Ingram potentially returning to Duval here right now. We're also going to talk about the reported hiring of Nick Holes as the Jaguars pass game coordinator. That will be in an episode later today. Got to do some research. Got to get my P's and Q's, my ducks in a row on that hire before I can talk about it um, with any sort of with any sort of uh, understanding of what Holes is bringing to Duval. But for now, we are going to talk about what's going on with Evan Ingram. We're going to do that right now. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'd like to remind you to hit me up on Twitter at Jordan DeLugo. You can also follow Generation Jag. We're at Generation Jag. Hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. Subscribe and review on your podcast platform of choice. Really appreciate y'all's support, Duval. Could not be doing this without you. So, what's going on with Evan Ingram? The last update was a few weeks ago where he was tweeting about New York, rubbed some people the wrong way, didn't really know how to take it. I, I told people not to read too much into it. I think that was probably the right thing because now you see the Jaguars tweeting out yesterday uh, just a tweet about how good Evan Ingram was in 2022. He quote tweeted it saying, my heart dropped when I thought this was the announcement. And then you get a report last night from Jordan Schultz of the score on Twitter at Schultz underscore report. Evan Ingram and the Jaguars have had positive discussions on a long-term contract and both sides are motivated to try to reach a deal before the March 7th tag deadline. Sources tell the score. Ingram is coming off his best season, compiling 73 catches for 766 yards and four touchdowns. Jacksonville values him a ton. Again, says Jordan Schultz. So not a huge surprise here. As uh, Trent Baalke kind of talked about earlier this year, they're going to try to keep the receivers, the guys that he's throwing the ball to, uh, that group intact. They're going to try to add to that group, not subtract from it. And and Evan Ingram, he did have a career year, had an unbelievable year, the best year a receiving tight end has ever had in Jacksonville. Of course, you could say, you know, Mercedes had that 10 10 um, touchdown year. He certainly did, but the way he impacted the offense from a receiving game standpoint, Evan Ingram had the best receiving year a Jaguars tight end has ever had. And he improved on his drop percentage. He was targeted over 100 times, only had four drops on the year. This is including the playoffs. Scored five total touchdowns, including the playoffs. Got up over 900 yards, close to 1,000 yards, including the playoffs. So it was tremendous. And he improved with Trevor Lawrence down the stretch, as a lot of these players did. They grew together, you know, first year in a new system. A lot of players, first year being in Jacksonville, Evan Ingram included. And they came together and they started they started uh, putting up a ton of points, putting up a ton of yards, being one of the most explosive offenses in football. Of course, even when they were one of the most explosive offenses in football, there were still lulls. There were still stretches where it was difficult for them to get things going, where they couldn't get out of their own way. You're hoping to improve that in 2023. But bringing Evan Ingram back to be your featured receiving tight end, a guy who was fourth in the league uh, among tight ends, I believe, last year in receiving yards. Again, a guy who only dropped four passes on over 100 targets, including the playoffs. His drop rate, 4.5%. You feel really damn I'm good about that last year and you want to see if he can continue to build off that my guess is he can because again he's in the prime of his career and second year with Trevor Lawrence and second year in Doug Peterson's offense and uh, this is an incredibly hard worker you saw it as soon as he got to Jacksonville this guy made sure that everyone uh, or he didn't make sure that everyone knew but it was impossible not to notice if you were out there at practice Evan Ingram getting out there early, staying late, working on his hands, being the primary receiver for all the quarterbacks and all the quarterback solo drills. Uh, Evan Ingram was putting in work all year. You saw that. You saw his effort on the field, catching some tough touchdown passes down the stretch, uh, you know, um, fighting to get out of bounds in a crucial moment for the Jaguars. Uh, I think Evan Ingram had a fantastic year for the team. Was he perfect? No. Is anybody ever going to be perfect? For an entire year? No. But Evan Ingram had a hell of a year for the Jaguars as a receiving tight end, and it looks like he'll be back. Uh, What's the number going to be? We don't yet know that, but I will tell you this. Whatever the number is, 
that year one cap hit, if it's a new deal, long-term deal, two, three years, four years, whatever it may be, I would be surprised if it was four, but two or three more likely, it seems like. Whatever it's going to be, that year one cap hit is going to be less than the cap hit that you would have from the franchise tag, right? The the cap hit from the franchise tag for tight ends this year is over $11 million. I can guarantee you if the Jaguars sign Evan Ingram to a long-term deal or any sort of deal here, that cap hit in year one is going to be much less than the franchise tag hit that, that they would have to um, that they, they would have to add to their cap total for 2023. So I think it's going to end up being a good thing. You'd rather sign him long term than do the franchise tag unless you feel like you would want to move on after 2023, which I don't think should be the case. Again, Evan Ingram still in the prime of his career, uh, still should be an effective player for a long time. It's not like his speed is going anywhere right now. You know, 28 years old, Evan Ingram um, looks like he might just be hitting his stride. And so obviously a huge development if you're able to keep Evan Ingram, not only because he was your top receiving tight end, but because your entire room outside of Luke Farrell is a free agent or set to be a free agent, right? Evan Ingram set to be an unrestricted free agent. Dan Arnold, same thing. Chris Manhurt, same thing. So get, you need numbers in this room beyond just having a stud tight end that, that can catch the football and get open like Evan Ingram. Um, you just need numbers. So they'll have Luke Farrell. So assuming Evan Ingram and Jaguars do work this out, which again, Jordan Schultz has reported that um, that both sides are, are motivated to try and reach a, a deal before March 7th. Both sides seem, you know, the Jaguars are tweeting out about Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram's tweeting out about the Jaguars. Seems like things are moving in the right direction here, no doubt about it. Uh, so getting him back, a, a reliable weapon for Trevor Lawrence a guy who really fits in Doug Peterson's scheme to a T on offense. Really exciting stuff for the Jaguars. And so your top offensive weapons, again, if Evan Ingram and the Jags do get this done, Calvin Ridley, and that's assuming he gets reinstated, which we expect to happen at some point after the start of the league year in mid-March. Could happen before, could happen after, don't know. We'll see how it all plays out with Calvin. But expecting him to be back, no doubt about it. Christian Kirk, Travis Etienne, Evan Ingram, Zay Jones, those are your top offensive weapons with Evan Ingram back and Ridley reinstated. So Ridley, this is a guy that does everything for you offensively, right? Line up outside, excuse me, give opposing DBs a... Really, really big time problems with his explosiveness off the line, his quickness in and out of breaks, his catch point skills, his speed. Uh, Calvin Ridley is a a legitimate wide receiver one in the NFL, and so he's going to add a ton. But Christian Kirk, we all know what he can do out of the slot, was catching everything, was beating people man man to man, was beating people in zone coverage, was uh, shaking defenders out of their jock straps and exploding in the other direction. Like He had a hell of a year as well. Scored a ton of big, big time touchdowns for the Jaguars in single coverage. Travis Etienne, we all know what he does with his speed, added some power, worked on his ball security throughout the year. Looks like he will be going into his second year as a pro. Uh, And again, yes, it is his second year as a pro because he missed his entire rookie year. Um, and, And I think he's obviously arrow pointed up. Evan Ingram, we've talked about, arrow pointed up. And then if Zay Jones is your fifth option on offense, I think you feel pretty good about that. Your fourth receiving option, your fifth overall option, you know, including Travis Etienne as an offensive weapon. I think you feel pretty damn good about that. Uh, Zay was not perfect. There were some, some moments, some games where he was not the guy you were looking for. Um, but at the same time, he had a lot of clutch plays of his own. He showed the, the size, speed, combination that can can be deadly in this league and he caught a ton of passes for the Jaguars you can't take away what Zay Jones did you would just like to see a little bit increased in efficiency for Zay Jones in 2023 and maybe he'll be able to do that with um with potentially less rep like less feature 
that he'll, he'll be less featured in the 2023 Jaguars offense than he was in 2022. We'll see how it plays out for him. Looking specifically at this tight end position, though, I mentioned, right, that if Evan Ingram's back, that's great. And you also have Luke Farrell. They'll need to add to the position, though, beyond that. Last year, they carried four, again, with Manhurts and Arnold being the other uh, the other two guys there. How are they going to address the rest of this, this group? Are they going to go get a guy in the draft? Which, if you want to go first, second, third round, there's going to be really talented tight ends. If you want to wait a little while, you'll probably be able to find someone who might be able to fit a specific role for you uh, in the draft. You want to go to the free agency route, maybe you bring back a, a Dan Arnold or, or Chris Manhurts. Maybe you go after some other talented receiving tight end. It looks like you know Mike Jasicki might be out there. Um, there's different ways to attack the rest of the position, but it looks like the Jaguars – are on their way to keeping one of their most reliable and productive offensive players from the 2023 season, a guy that brings a tremendous athletic skill set, a guy that brings a ton of hard work and dedication, and a guy who loves being here in Jacksonville. Uh, So great news on that front. We'll be looking for that deal to come in again before March 7th. Again, Jordan Schultz's report is, Evan Ingram and the Jaguars have had positive discussions on a long-term contract, and both sides are motivated to try to reach that deal before the March 7th tag deadline. So they've got a couple weeks to get this done. Seems like they will get this done. I'm really, really looking forward to it. But that's going to do it here for Duval Daily. Thank you so much for tuning in here on Wednesday, February 22nd. I will get y'all another show today where we're going to talk about the Jaguars' new pass game coordinator, Nick Holes who comes over from UNLV. A lot of NFL experience as well for him. We'll talk about that later today. But again, thank you so much for tuning in. And until our next show, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday.